if you were just looking through this difficulty here. So, hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Carolyn Ellinger. I am the general manager of the printed electronics business of Eastman Kodak Company. So Kodak is doing a bunch of uh, printed electronics. So we have a number of different products that uh, play in the printed electronics industry. So we start as a substrate provider. So we supply PET films under our S-Star brand, either heat stabilized or not heat stabilized, primed or unprimed, in a range of thicknesses. We also offer uh, conductive films in uh, uh, HCF family of SDAR products. And those are polythiophene based conductive films whose uh, sheet resistance can be tuned to uh, meet our customer needs. So and which one is So that's what you over do? here. And so really what we're highlighting in the HCF films is how we work with partners and customers to take films that we manufacture at Kodak and integrate them into products. So what you're looking at here is a touch sensor made from a polythiophene film, that an HCF S-Star film made at Kodak, patterned by a company named Zymox, and then controlled by a company named SigmaSense. So again, the patterning was by Sigma, um, excuse me, by Zymox, that's being controlled by SigmaSense, and it's all polythiophene that was manufactured at Kodak, the films, excuse me, coded at Kodak, and it is a multi-touch. If you look at the screen, you can see where it picks up all of the touch points of all of my fingers and from the way that it is controlled from a highly resistive P-dot film. So P-dot, highly resistive. Is resist, is not capacitive technology. It it's is based a, on it, the resistance. It is a capacitive technology. It is just, when you compare it to our other transparent conductive technologies, which are a metal mesh, it is a higher range of consistency, a higher range of sheet resistance. The, um, it is highly conductive in the family of organic conductors, but when you look at, compared to ITO or metal mesh technologies, it is much more resistive. But the touch panel itself is a capacitive touch panel. And do you work on the, this kind of stuff, the CH LCD, or which part of it? So this Colesteric LCD um, is a Kent display product, uh, and it's a boogie board. And so the Kodak product in this is also an HCF S-Star film. And Kent display integrates our product into their product in order to erase the display. And so it's a pressure written display that is cleared with a high voltage field that is applied through our transparent electrode. Nice. And so this is how Kodak works with partners to integrate um, components that we manufacture to enable others to have uh, application-based products that they bring to market. So this P-Dot. Right. And are you the leader in the P-Dot? I honestly don't know our, what our position in the yeah. market is because that's not my business. So okay. the Estar business is, is run from a different organization and to, you know in the spirit of full disclosure our role in the in the HCF um, film uh, providing is yeah. the coder. So we coat PDOT materials, we don't manufacture the materials that we coat. Alright, and what is this? So this is a range uh, uh, the different uh, steps of a flexographic printed functional printed uh, device. So the role of let's start with the end product and go backwards. And so this is a roll of material that was printed um, a number of years ago using our high resolution flexographic printing plates. Is it this? Which is this. And so flexographic printing is a contact printed methodology that um, uses a patterned flexographic plate, which is a polymer plate. And that plate is wrapped around a printing cylinder and used on a printing press. And so it's, you, um, it's a roll-to-roll -roll process where the ink is picked up by the plate and then transferred from the plate to the substrate. What makes our um, Ectaflex line of functional printing uh, products different from graphics industry flexographic printing products is the resolution that we can achieve. And so we have a suite of technologies, including hardware, software, consumables, and, and um, 
you want to call it, services, consulting services, that allow you to get... That's okay. That allow you to get um, very small detail. Right, uh, right, between 7 and 10 micron features on Substream. How about the, the price of making one of these? Is it expensive to make a custom kind of like mold, or what is this? So, it depends. It depends. It depends. And so, all of our... Excuse me, all of our... Um, I've lost the language. It, did you say flexographic? Yes. All of your... No. So so I was going to say, the way, that, the way that we manage our business in, in printed electronics with our different customers is all on a relationship basis, right? And so depending on how a customer intends to use a product really depends on what the, the cost is to bring it in, into their process. So we start by offering a patterned plate. So a customer might come to us and buy a pre-patterned plate to evaluate high resolution flexography on their press in their facility with the inks that they're interested in. And from that initial evaluation might go out and buy the whole suite of, of enabling technologies that would enable them to pattern their own plates mm -hmm. in their own facility. So depending on whether or not they're starting with Kodak okay. patterning the plate for them or buying the suite of technologies that you would need to pattern your own plates to do the whole pre-press operation on site really is a very different conversation as to ter terms of what are the price per entry is for this suite of technologies. So what is this? Is this what happens before? So this is what happens before. So this is what happens after the printing. This is what's used to print. This is what's used to image the printing plate. And so this is called a TIL, T-I-L, or a thermal imaging layer. And so it is patterned with our high resolution imager. And it is um, patterned by laser ablation using Kodak's um, trademark square spot technology. And uh, the feature size that can be resolved in the mask layer, so the thermal imaging layer is effectively an optical mask layer, is two microns. So you have a two micron image mask layer that you then use to transfer that pattern to the flexographic plate. The image uh, resolution goes down a bit, the feature size goes up a bit at that transfer, and then transferring to the page, you get a little higher uh, feature size than what you were imaging on the tip. Why is it green, greenish kind of color? That's so that, I mean, it's a laser ablated product. So that's, so the mask needs to block the light, the UV light that is used to expose the plate. And it has to be a material that can be patterned using a, a laser ablation. Nice. So absorptive. So is this the area you work on? So I work on two pieces of the of functional printing. One is, again, enabling our customers to use flexographic printing to manufacture their own products. And the other is Kodak using that same technology to contract manufacture devices in our clean room facilities in Rochester, New York. And so we have a process where we use high resolution flexographic printing to print a catalytic ink that we then pass through an electroless plating process to plate copper, which is also inline passivated before being packaged and distributed to our customers. And so we essentially make custom patterned metal mesh films that are highly transparent and highly conductive. So in this particular example, we're um, demonstrating antenna. The antenna that are integrated into this window our 4G LTE antenna. The antenna on the left-hand corner here is just the metal mesh. Again, it's the print and plate process, so it's a copper metal mesh as the conductor. The antenna on the right-hand side has additional image content printed in the background to match the optical density of the antenna so that it's less noticeable to the human eye. I'm it's so transparent, my camera can focus on it. <laughs> it's actually very difficult to take pictures of, having attempted to do so for my, myself. All right, I need to go in manual focus, but I never do that. Okay, <laughs> so, so uh, you could have antennas on windows. Right, and so one of the projects that we're working on is an automotive to take antenna that are traditionally mounted on the top surface of the car in something called a shark fin or in a monopole and distribute those antennas across the top of the front windshield so that they can get their power signal through the top of the car. Nice. And so those antenna include the uh, cell 
uh, antenna, so 4G LTE, 5G, as well as Wi-Fi, DSRC, um, and GPS. So nice. we um, are able to deliver a sufficient level of conductivity that we can do RF uh, antenna in the you know six to ten gigahertz range. So this is showing the, the bandwidth. So this is so showing the received power strength from a, a Verizon cell towers that are in the area. So this is a multi-band antenna. This happens to be the 750 megahertz uh, band for Verizon, and this is the signal as received by the transparent antenna. To, to get the most stable reception in the car or some kind of bus or something, you want to have diversity antennas. You want to have on both sides of the bus or the, of the car. Sure. So I mean, you for 4G and especially for 5G, you will do some MIMO applications where you mount the antenna in different orientations, but relative to the the signal that you're receiving. Um, and what we do is we provide the antenna, and then the integration uh, is is designed with in partnership with our customers to figure out the right drive electronics and the and the signal processing and how you would actually place those antenna properly within the environment that they need to be placed. And that might be much more efficient than uh, trying to go through the car's uh, metallic interiors, which are blocking antennas and stuff. So there are there are pros and cons. Um, with our partners, we've shown that you know a similar function received by the uh, in, within the shark fin antenna versus on the windshield with a thin film transparent antenna, the transparent antenna actually provides um, better performance because of, as you say, where it's positioned relative to the body of the car. It depends on the, the type of signal that you're talking about and where it's coming from and where it needs to be propagated to. Nice. What do you show there? So these are, um, again, different antenna. This is the same. Um, Image what do you want to call it? Multi-band, 4G LTE, multi-band antenna that's in the window, showing how we manufacture it on a flexible support, and then it is integrated into the glass through a lamination process. Um, so this is a you know lab-scale prototype that's similar to what's in the window, showing how it becomes laminated to glass. This is a, just a different antenna design, happens to be a DSRC antenna with and without that camouflage in the background. So how's it been to show at an ID Tech X show? It's been a good show. I mean, we have a range of products, so we're not, you know, going to cover everyone's interests. But there's been interest both in transparent antenna, from our general capability, as, as, from manufacturing highly conductive uh, electroless plated custom patterns, as well as the suite of high-resolution flexographic um, products. So Kodak has been involved in this kind of market since the beginning of this being, I mean, maybe invented this or. Uh, I wouldn't say that Kodak that invented uh, either printing or printed electronics, but we've always been... Or film. Uh, well, we did, invent, we did invent film. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've always been a materials, roll-to-roll manufacturing uh, company, right? So material science, imaging, image processing, roll-to-roll processing, um, printed electronics is right in our sweet spot of, of what we have a long history of being able to uh, provide to customers. So... It, Many years ago, when Kodak was inventing the film mm -hmm. and the the process of making those roll to roll, I guess, right? Yes. Uh, how is that? How does that related to the cutting edge of printed electronics? <laughs> how, is it very similar? Or? Uh, so, so there are similarities. So if you look at our HCF star films, which again are those polythiophene coated films. That's effectively a, a, a coating that's very much like a film product, right? It takes a flexible support, puts it through a coating machine, comes out with a functional product on the other side. So Kodak was coating the stuff that goes to make film? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, a long time ago, 50, so, 50, 70 years ago. 100 years ago, yeah. 100 years ago. It's 100 years ago. Yeah. So all this print electronic stuff is not new, right? It, it's really not. I mean, it, I mean, when you look at the photochemistry that's involved in, in silver halide film, it's not printed electronics the way we think of it today. But it is, you know, functional, flexible device. They had to code this stuff uniformly, perfectly on the whole film. Yes, Stop, small, kilometers multi, long. Multi had to be perfect to the micron, yep. micron kind of stuff. Silver containing, defect free layers, multi layer, up, you know, 12 to 15 layers of material coated to nanometer precision, rail to roll process at very high speed. And we, now? We still are a, 
a manufacturer of film products. We make motion picture films, consumer film, and, and professional film today. And now uh, you're ready to print the, the whole world because everything <laughs> is going to have printed electronics in it, right? We are open to working with all customers to help you know, bring printed, rea uh, printed electronics to, to reality, yes.